West Coast Wednesday. My name is Ms. Emily. And I'm Miss Megan. And we are from West Coast Swing Online. So we are going to get started today with some styling and then Brian B is going to bring some musicality into your life later. So first, let's go ahead and get started. We, uh, we often get the question, are we all good? Cool. We often get the question, uh, how do we look less robotic? So one of the things that we're going to start with today is actually rolling through the feet and that's going to add a little bit more fluidity to our movement as far as West Coast Swing goes um, and add a little bit more style to your steps. So I'm going to do the followers footwork. Miss Megan's going to do the leaders follow, uh, work, footwork. So we're going to start just in place. We're going to roll through the feet. So the toe to the heel, toe to the heel. Then we have our triple step, triple step and triple full step. So let's roll through our feet again. Toe to heel, toe to heel, triple step, and triple step. One more time. One and two, three and four, five and six. I lied. Do it again. One, two, three and four, five and six. So we are obviously just doing our six count patterns there, but if we added that to moving forward and back, we are gonna stay connected through this entire thing. So what this enables us to do, whether we're going forward or backwards, Megan's gonna go backward for the leader, I'm gonna go forward for the follower, I'm actually gonna go through the feet, so we're rolling through the feet, I'm gonna go heel to toe, Megan's gonna go toe to heel. I'm gonna stay in that connected position this entire time, and then if we went the other way, so we both have to go each way because with West Coast Swing, <laughs> thank you, we have both connections. So from here, when we go into this, one thing that's going to be super important uh, is the connection on the four and the six. So we are gonna do a couple of stylistic walks for us, and we're also gonna do some anchor variations. But what we need to achieve is that connection by four and six, four for a six count pattern, and six for an eight count pattern. So if we did that, we have one, two, three, and four. We're gonna lock into place, and at this point, once we add a little bit of style to our anchors, we can pretty much do whatever we need, but we need to find that connection first. So we'll anchor step. If we did a right side pass, we're gonna find the same thing. So one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Do that one more time, the other side. One, two, three, and four. We find that connection and click in. Five and six. So you'll notice we go back to the walking for a second. I am gonna roll from my heel to my toe as the follower. That enables me to have a little bit more control of where my weight is. So if I do that, I'm not falling to my foot as I would if I just kind of stepped flat-footed. I'm actually able to control exactly where my weight needs to be. Two, three, four, five, and six. So we'll go back the other way. So Megan's going to roll from her heel to her toe. I'm going to go toe to heel. Two three, four, five, six. And I believe there's a whole bunch of different videos on West Coast Swing Online that goes through rolling through the feet, mm -hmm. uh, rolling count, all of those fun stylistic. Some different footwork to roll through the feet as well. Yes. So from there, let's go ahead. Are there any questions? Okay, cool. <laughs> We're gonna try this again a few more times because I really want you to focus on finding that connection on the four and the six. So we're gonna do a sugar push again. We have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Now, Megan and I have both talked about this. We both do heel to toe and toe to heel, but either way, whichever one we do, we do actually roll through the feet. So that enables us, again, to know exactly where our weight is. So if it's a faster song, a slower song, that kind of enables us to choose which one we're going to do. So I'm gonna do the toe to heel this time instead of the heel to toe as I step forward. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. So I still have the same control weight-wise as I would if I was doing heel to toe. Um, 
Do you find that you do the heel to toe on slower songs, faster songs? Uh, no, on average, I think when I'm social dancing, pretty much I do toe to heel now, but as I was learning, it was way easier to go heel to toe and give me more control. Cool. So keep that in mind. We just want you to know where your weight is at all times. Leaders, that goes for you as well. So one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Cool? Awesome. So. We're now gonna talk about a few different stylistic options for your walks. So I'm gonna do a couple for the follower and then uh, Megan's gonna go over uh, one option for the leader. So again, as we walk through, we're gonna roll from the toe to the heel instead of heel to the toe. And I'm actually gonna use my hip a little bit to move into those walks. So I'm still rolling through the feet but I'm also going to maintain a connection away so I know exactly where my leader wants me to be. So he may lead a slight rotation in the upper body, but this is really me kind of playing within the uh, boundaries that I have. So if I do this, I'm walking forward for one, two, three, four, and that can be into whatever pattern you're doing. Go ahead and finish it out for five and six. We're running out of space, so I'll back it up. One more time. So just using the hips, not necessarily using your whole upper body, but thinking about maintaining the connection if you were to have your partner. So you're gonna stay back, not necessarily keeping your core back, but you're not pulling your bum back. You're actually keeping your uh, upper body back a little bit to give kind of a slinky, sexy look to your walk. Then, from there, um, as long as it does not mess with your connection, you can add a little bit more rotation, so a little bit of a catwalk um, <laughs> to your walks going forward. So again, I'm gonna use the toe to heel, uh, rolling through the feet. We have one, but I'm just gonna cross the tracks a little bit more than I was before. Cool, going back, and then we'll try it from the other side. Starting with our right foot, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna try it going this way, cause why not? And a one, two, three, four, five, and six. Cool, one more time. I'm gonna do the crisscrossy one, cause it's fun. And what else do we have to do? So let's try it again. And a one, two, three, four, five, and six. Cool, so if you're feeling crazy and you wanna add a little bit more style to it, and the song that you're hearing, you just kind of feel like you should add to it, you can always add the arm as you walk if you are so inclined. But if you're not feeling that, go ahead and just work on the feet. That's totally cool too. So Miss Megan is going to do an option for the leaders and it's a slight turn in of the leg as she steps back. So those steps can be big, they can be a little bit smaller, but again, make sure that you maintain the connection with your partner in whatever you're doing. So whether you're extending a pattern, a couple more walks to make an eight count pattern, a six count pattern to an eight count pattern, or you just feel like you wanna hit a one sometime and you need four walks instead of your two. That's an instance that you might use some extra walks. So, <laughs> leaders, go ahead and, uh, actually, do you wanna rotate this way so you do it? This way? No, like, towards the camera. So they can see your legs. Going that way. Either way. <laughs> so you'll see as she takes her steps back, she is moving her knees to the inside of the body. So the inside, 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 and again, and walk, two, three, four, five, and six. You'll see Brian B do this a lot when he's grooving. So if you wanna be like Brian B, you should try that. All right, so any questions? Mm. Gordon has a question about the uh, heel to toe lead for the leader. Do you 
prefer as the leader moving forward to strike on the toe or the heel? As the leader? Can you repeat the question, yes, as the leader. On so, the what was the question? Do you prefer to strike on the toe or heel moving forward as the leader? Oh, as the leader, do I prefer to move uh, heel to toe or toe to heel as the leader? Yes, uh, on four. Heel to toe, mainly. Yes, so depending on the song, depending on the feel of it, if I have to take a big step, if I have to take usually any step, it's going to be your heel. One, One two, I don't know why three, I'm and four. <laughs> five and six. If we were to do that slowly on four, so we have one, two, three, and four. From here, I, I can't really take any other step back, so I'm going toe to heel. This enables the leader to know exactly where I am, and I know exactly where he is on that four before the anchor. So heel to toe is the way to go. Haha, <laughs> that rhymed. <laughs> any other questions? So we are now going to add some variations to our anchors. We have eight different styles um, that we're going to change up today. So the first four that we do are kind of on the easier side, and then we're going to take a slight break, and we'll talk about uh, the different options for the next four. So the first four, we will both do the same footwork. We're just going to do our step taps. So our anchor steps, we have two beats to do either a triple or a step tap, whichever you prefer. So again, we're going to start with the step taps. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretty easy. We're going to do all of these for eight counts, and later on I'll give you a song that you can actually practice all of these to, which works out perfectly, and it's a great tempo. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, triple underneath ourselves. So we have triple, but instead of just stepping to the side, we're actually going to add a slide. So we slide to the right. Then we have triple slide, triple slide, triple slide. So if we did that from the top, we're going to put those two together. We have our step taps and then our triples with a slide. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have one and two three and four, five and six, seven and eight. We good so far? Cool. We're going to back up just a little bit because we have to cross forward now. So the next thing we're going to do is crossing forward. And you guys have probably heard quite a, uh, quite a few people talk about this as a variation, but we're going to incorporate it into all of our eight variations. So the right foot goes across for one and two, left foot crosses now, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Let's do that one more time. So we start with our right foot first. We have, sorry, crossing. <laughs> one, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Now from here, we're gonna do the fourth one. This is our cross to the back. So we're gonna take our right foot on that diagonal. We have one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. So if we did those last two, we're gonna do the cross forward and then the cross back, and then we'll do the first four all together. So we cross forward with our right foot. We have one and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, crossing back, oh, one, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Cool, any questions? Not so far. Awesome, we're gonna put those first four together. So we have your step taps, we have your triple with the slide, we have the cross forward, and then we have the cross back. So we're gonna put all those together. We're gonna to do each of those for eight counts a piece, starting with our right foot. So we have our step taps. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, triple one, and slide, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, cross front, one and two, three and four, five and six, seven, cross behind a one and two, three and four, 
five and six, seven and eight. All right, so that is your first set. The second set gets a little bit more tricky because you can add a whole bunch of different options. So one of the things that you can change as far as styling goes are your levels. You can either go down, you can go high, you can stay the same, but you can also go to the side. So one of the things that the next four are gonna do are going to play a little bit with the levels. So the next one we're going to do is a dip and a tap. From here, you're gonna dip below, and this can be as wide as you would like it. You have dip and tap, dip and tap, dip, tap, and dip and tap. So you see that Miss Megan is adding a little bit more of, your, of her shoulders into it, which is totally cool. We're gonna do an isolations class later on, which will cover all of that good stuff. So you can add as much of the upper body as you like. Again, don't mess with the connection. So let's do the dip again. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is probably gonna be the trickiest one coming up. This is gonna be a syncopated um, anchor step. So, yeah, I guess we'll do this. <laughs> From here, we've just done our step taps. We're gonna step on the and. So we have and one, and two, we tap there and then we replace the weight. And three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. So let's do that a couple more times. Starting with our right foot free, we start on the and, so we have and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven and eight. So let's put those two together. We have the dip tap first. That sounds a little weird. Mm -hmm. The dip and the tap first, and then we have our syncopations. So starting with our right foot again, we have dip and tap. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, and two, and three, and four, a five and six, a seven and eight. We're gonna do that one more time, just because it's fun. So dip and tap again. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a one and two and three and four, a five and six, a seven and eight. All right, y'all still with us? Oh, they are, that's good. <laughs> that's nice, cool. So we are gonna do the last two, the, or the, the second to last one is a press and a change of weight. So for this one, we're gonna do kind of the more basic one first and then we'll talk about another option or layer to add into that. You're still gonna have your right foot, so you're actually gonna press into your foot and then bring the other leg in. So we have a press, and in, press, and in, press. Keep going just for fun, press, change weight, press, change weight, press, change weight, and press, change weight. So, cool things that we can do with this, again, depending on how you're feeling with the music, whether it's fast, slow, lyrical, poppy, whatever you want, this one might be a little bit more of a, actually can go either way, so if you feel like you are in a lyrical song and you kind of want to rise and then come in with that leg, it can be as much of a lift as you'd like, or like what Miss Megan was doing earlier, you can add a little bit more of the jagged, <laughs> poppy um, shoulder look. So it can be more of a hit and then a drag, hit and then a drag, hit, drag, hit, and drag and that goes for either the leader or the follower so let's put those three together the a little bit more challenging ones we have the dip tap the syncopations and the press and the change of weight so dip tap first we have one two three four five six seven syncopations a one a two a three a four a five a six seven and eight then press 
press, change, weight, press, change, weight, press, change, weight, press, change, weight. All right, we are down to our last one, our eighth anchor. We are going to float our anchor to the side. So from here, our right foot's free. We have one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. One thing to remember, you do want to make sure that you are in control of your weight the entire time. So the more you step outside of your body, so any wider than your shoulders, that's when you're going to lose a little bit of control as far as your weight goes. So when you're doing that floating anchor, especially for the leader, make sure that you are maintaining your uh, weight and knowing exactly where you need to go at that point. So let's go ahead and do the press and change of weight and then the floating anchor, so the last two. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have the press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we move. One and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. All right, we are gonna put the last four together. So we've got our dip tap, our syncopations, press and change of weight, and then our floating anchor, and then we're gonna try all eight together. So dip tap first. We have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a one, and two, a three, and four, a five, and six, a seven, press, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we move, one, a two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Ben, do we have any questions? Cool. We are going to put all eight together. So let's go through this. We have our step taps. We have our triple with a slide. We have our cross forward, our cross back, and then we added the little bit uh, more challenging anchors. We had the dip tap. We have the syncopations, the press with the change of weight, and the floating anchor. So let's try that all together from the beginning, starting with our step taps. Easy peasy. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a oh, one, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, cross front, one, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, now back, one, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, dip, tap, dip, and tap, three, four, five, six, seven, syncopations, a one, and two, a three, and four, a five, and six, seven, and eight, we press, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we move, one, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. So that is all eight put together for you. It's a really good way to practice all of those different anchors. Um, I believe Brian B has posted a link underneath this for Intentions by Justin Bieber. It's a really, really good, slow, steady beat um, song, which is a really, really nice way to practice all of these um, in a consecutive manner. So, are there any questions? No. Cool. Then we are going to sign off. Stay tuned. Oh, I'm just kidding. Um, there was a request to show how to use the anchors whenever you're actually connected to a person. Oh. Yes. So we are going to do that, and that's actually going to be in a separate video coming up. But for a couple of them, really, uh, as long as you maintain that connection on the four followers, you click into place, and leaders, you make that connection on four or six, you can do whichever anchor you would like within reason. So if we did one, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. <laughs> Ms. Megan did hers, I did mine. Oop. Do it this way? We'll try it this way. We'll do the float. So one, two, three, and four, 
five, and six. If we did another one, we have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So those are just a couple of options. We are actually going to put these, I have a whole nother video that I think is going to um, be coming up later that has four different basic steps and uses all of these different anchor steps. So you will see those coming soon. Until then, keep practicing your anchor on your own. All right, now, since we're West Coast Swing Online, and these, these are styling classes, we have styling courses as well for leaders and for followers. So if you are interested in those, this week and this week only, they are $69, they are usually $159, so it's a super good deal. Um, you get tons of good PDFs with information, videos, uh, helpful hints on how to add a little bit of style to your West Coast swing. So stick around. Brian B's coming up with musicality in just a few minutes. Again, I'm Miss Emily. And I'm Miss Megan. From West Coast Swing Online. Thanks for hanging out with us.